sweating. This is my second time trying to do this video because my card was full. Awesome. <sighs> it has been gray here for, I swear to you, three weeks. I feel like I haven't seen the sun in months. I hate it. I am one more day away from just booking a plane ticket, a one-way ticket, to somewhere where the sunshine is. Welcome back to the channel. I am Jessica. I am lecture pro Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jess. I'm an electrical apprentice here in Ontario. If you're new here, welcome. Thanks for coming by. I would understand why a lot of people are confused with the thumbnail and the title of this video by just looking at the thumbnail because I obviously don't look like an electrician, but I am. Don't judge a book by its cover. Today we're going to get into a lot of questions that I get on all my videos. I did a video, what well, was my first video, um, about my journey, my story, how I got into the electrical field. But since then I've gotten, that was my first video, I didn't really know what I was doing, but I've gotten a lot of questions since then. So I'm hoping to do a couple videos in different parts explaining all those questions and giving you guys the answers that you want. And I got a tripod which means I can do videos anywhere now. I've been putting my camera on random boxes, random house items, blocks of wood. So this is gonna be good. This is better. So I've got all the questions written in my phone and um, I'm gonna try to do them in an order that makes sense, but we'll see how that goes. I think the biggest question that I get is how to get an apprenticeship. Um, there's a few different ways to get an apprenticeship. You can, you can go to the union, I'm with IBW, I went through them. Um, they have their own interview process, which I'll get into in a different question, but I went through them. Um, I know you can go to a non-union company and they will sign you up as an apprenticeship and be kind of your sponsor, just like the union is my sponsor. So yeah, there's a couple different ways. You can either go union or you can go non-union. There are a few different unions here in Ontario that I know of, two of the major ones being IBW and CUSW. There's a lot of opinions on the internet and between people on whether or not union is better than non-union. I think both have pros and cons. It's kind of up to you to decide which way you want to go. I chose the union for a variety of different reasons. I just thought as someone who didn't have any experience, it was an easier way in, in terms of getting the experience, um, getting the knowledge, being taught the proper and safe way, and kind of just getting my foot in the door. That kind of leads into my other question, which I get a lot, is do you need experience? In my opinion, you don't need experience. Does experience help? Of course it helps. However, some of the guys I've come across, they went from high school into a college program. In my opinion, we're still at like the same level. I don't think it did them any different than me. So in my opinion, I wouldn't waste the money on school when when you do your apprenticeship, you're going to get that schooling regardless. Uh, it's the only time you benefit from doing that college program is sometimes you get exempt from certain classes when you do go to trade school during your apprenticeship. But on the flip side, if you don't know if electrical is something that you want to do, maybe that college program is the right choice for you. You kind of got to, it's all dependent on what you want. Another question I get, or I guess it's just like overall confusion, is what is an electrical apprenticeship? A lot of people assume that the apprenticeship and school are like two separate things, which they're not. For the electrical field, uh, especially if you go the union way like I did, I had to do a pre-apprenticeship course, which is after the fact you've been accepted into the union, into their intake. Usually the union has intakes a couple of times a year, um, depending on what local you're in. When you're pre-apprenticeship, it's basically mine was 16 weeks. So the first six to eight weeks, I think it was 16, maybe not. But anyways, the first half of it, you're gonna learn all the necessary tickets. So you're gonna get your actual tickets for working at heights, women's first aid, forklift training, all zoom boom training, like all that kind of stuff. In the second half, it's a workshop half. So you pretty much learn the basic tools, how to use them all, you learn the basics of electrical, you learn the different systems, a three-way system, you learn lighting systems. They give you the bare necessities that you're gonna need to be successful in the placement that they give you. One reason, another reason why I don't think experience or schooling is necessary is because you get that in your pre-apprenticeship and not only do you get that, but you're getting it and you're getting paid. So during your pre-apprenticeship, you can get unemployment and then during your placement, you're getting paid minimum wage to pretty much learn. And don't be intimidated by the placement because you really have to mess up to not pass the pre-apprenticeship, so you'll be fine. Once you pass that pre-apprenticeship, you enter your actual apprenticeship, the union will sponsor you as their apprentice and that's when your hours start. So in Ontario, I think it's Ontario, 
you need 9,000 hours to complete your apprenticeship. Your apprenticeship will be five terms, so each term is 1,800 hours. In the union, um, you're only, I don't know if it's the union or if it's just in general, you're only allowed to log 40 hours a week towards your apprenticeship. So it doesn't matter if you work overtime or not, it's only 40 hours that are gonna be allocated a week to your apprenticeship, which is fine. You're still getting paid double time, overtime, whatever it is. But throughout this apprenticeship, that's where schooling comes in. So it isn't mutually exclusive. For electrical, you have to go to trade school three times. It's um, I think each term of, or each block of school is eight to 10 weeks. But again, like you're getting paid to go to school. You're on unemployment and you're not fired or anything. Your employer lets you go to school and lets you come back, unless you come back most of the time. Once you've gotten your 9,000 hours or you're getting close to it, uh, you can go and write your exam to be licensed. I'm only second term, so I've only been to school once and I have, yeah, I don't have a ton of hours yet, but we're getting there. So this kind of leads into the next question I get all the time is how to get into the union um, or how to, how to get into IBW. So like I said, you have to apply. There's a few intakes every year depending on your local. If you don't know what a union is, IBW is the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. I think it has about 11 locals. So locals are pretty much each, it's an area in Ontario that they're designated for. So they get the work in that geographical area. So in my local, I applied. Uh, there was two different ones that I could have applied to since I'm kind of in the middle of them, but I applied to this specific one. I applied online first. You submit a resume, a cover letter, and you kind of have to, I think the second step is you do a aptitude test online. I think it was about 50 questions. On this aptitude test, there's going to be things like uh, patterns, um, some basic math questions, fractions, and reference to like a measuring tape. It's really not all that hard. I wasn't the best at math or fractions, but once you get the hang of it, it's not that bad. There's a lot of examples on YouTube and Google if you are struggling with that. So after you submit your online application and you get approved, they will call you for an interview. I guess like a three part interview it was like half a day so there's an interview portion which was about 15 to 20 minutes there's um a physical in the physical they kind of they kind of test just like your basic knowledge so uh, i had to match tools to the names of the tools uh, we had to climb a ladder and just show that we're not being reckless and to show that we're not going to go to the very top of the ladder you're not going to pass that like warning a big warning sign at the top of it and then we also had to mount um a box to a piece of plywood. It really wasn't, it wasn't crazy. And then you also have to do another aptitude test in there. It was about 100 questions. And honestly, I thought I failed big time, <laughs> which I, pro I probably did fail the, I probably did fail the test, but I think that's the best part about the union. They still give you a chance regardless of your experience, regardless of if you pass all three parts of their interview process. Um, after the pro after that um, interview process, they call you, email you, and let you know if you got in or not. And do I have one up as a female, especially in Ontario? Probably, I won't deny that. <laughs> a lot of people kind of rag on females because they're like, oh, you just got in because you're a female. You just got in because the company gets a grant, which whatever, I don't care. If I'm getting in because that's what I want to do and someone's willing to give me a chance, then so be it. I don't really care and I don't care what people have to say about it. So with that, a lot of people always ask me how long the apprenticeship is, and it really depends on how much you work, where you work, what company you're with, it depends what industry you're in. So for example, I already know a couple people that were in my intake that are probably ahead of me, just because of the amount of time that I've had off. When you're working a trade, it's very, it can be very up and down. When you're working residential, and the electrical field, it's usually pretty stable. You're usually always guaranteed the 40 hours a week. But if you go somewhere I was where it was a car plant and it was just a project, a summer project shutdown thing. I worked for, I worked my butt off for five months, seven days a week. I could still only claim those 40 hours a week and then I got laid off for a few months. So it really depends what you're after. Um, it depends what experience you want. It depends how fast you want to get it done. There's a lot of pros and cons to Resi and ICI. If you don't know what ICI is, it's industrial, commercial, institutional. And that's the next question I get a lot. What do you, what field do you rather? Do you rather residential or do you rather industrial? And honestly, Resi kind of has my heart. It's just, I love being outside. I love being outdoors. I love the fresh air. Um, when I was with the guys, we would always just play music and hang out. It felt like we were just hanging out. It didn't feel like work work. Um, obviously we worked, but it was just a lot more laid back, consistent, stable. 
Whereas industrial, I also loved it because I was making more money than I've ever seen in my life because we're working crazy hours. Something else I get asked a lot is about layoffs. Someone asked me if I got laid off from the union. Um, that's not how it works. You don't get laid off from the union. Once you're in with the union, you're always sponsored by the union. You're always an apprentice through the union. How jobs work is it's the union and then they get a bunch of contractors underneath them. These contractors will send out calls. Uh, we have an app that we can see who's on the list, which is all of the apprentices that are out of work. So it's an out of work list. Um, and then on the app, you also see all the jobs that are out there and you can bid on each job. So bidding is pretty much applying. So anytime you're laid off, you get put on this out of work list. The higher you are up on the list, um, the likelier you are to get one of the jobs that you apply for. It's all about like fairness in regards to the different type of industries. When you're in resi, you don't usually get laid off very often. Um, whereas if you're in ICI, you'll get laid off quite a bit and usually you jump around from job to job. Another question I get asked so much and that everyone wants to know is how much electricians make. <laughs> if you talk to anyone, if you tell anyone you want to be an electrician, their automatic thought is, oh my God, you're, you're gonna get so much money. You're gonna make so much money. That's a stable job. You're gonna have the best income. And to an extent that's true, but it's not true when you're just starting out. And a lot of people know the struggle when you're an apprentice. Everyone always wants to know about money. And that's fair, like you are, it's a job. You need to make money. What a lot of people don't know is, if, especially if you're in the union and you wanna know how much people are making in different locals, cause different locals pay different rates. But regardless, if you wanna know how much electricians make in the union, whether it's an apprentice, foreman, journeyman, whatever it may be, whatever level, it is public knowledge, it's on, Google, our agreement is on Google. I'll try to link it below. I'm gonna pull up my agreement and I'll tell you guys how much we make. But again, if you're working a different sector, you get paid a different amount. Um, in residential, you get paid a little less than industrial and commercial. So the way the wage package works, uh, when you're a pre-apprenticeship and when you're first term, you make, a, you make about 40% of the journeyman's rate. In my pre-apprenticeship, I was making minimum wage, uh, and then when I got signed on, I was just making above minimum wage as a first term. It's a very long agreement. Oh, so your base rate. So in the rates and the union, you get paid like a package, which includes like your union dues, your fees, your CPP, like all that stuff. But I'm just gonna talk about the base rate that actually goes on your paycheck. For residential, first term, it's 17.50. Second term, it's 21.90 an hour. Third term, 26.23 an hour. Fourth term, $30.60 an hour. And fifth term is 34.98 almost $35 for a fifth term in residential work. Once you're licensed, um, that rate goes up to $40. So every term you're pretty much getting a 10% increase in your rate. And the thing I really like about the union is they always update their agreement every, I think it's every three to five years. So every year you're guaranteed an increase of some sort. It's usually about a dollar. I don't think, I think they have an agreement or something with the government where it's never less than a dollar. The way they do our raises is they take the top two trades and it's usually the median of their raises that we get. So if you're a journeyman in resi, you make $40 an hour. And if you are a journeyman in ICI, so industrial, commercial, institutional, that's like car plants, a Tim Hortons, you're making $50 an hour. So it's a $10 an hour difference, which you could see why a lot of people like ICI. Something else that is much more different in ICI is you usually get paid double time for overtime and there's always opportunities for overtime. Whereas if you're in resi, you don't have a lot of opportunity for overtime and it's usually time and a half. It's never usually double time. And again, in ICI, because it's factory work sometimes or most of the time, you're usually either on days, afternoons or nights. And if you're not on days, the odds are you're gonna get a shift premium. So for me, for example, I was a second term this past summer or I am a secretary, but this past summer I was working in a car plant. I was on night shift, so not only was I getting ICI rate, I was getting a shift premium and I was getting double time most of the time. So my hourly rate was close to $50, which you will never touch as a second term apprentice or an apprentice at all in residential. So getting into electrical and getting into the trades is not like a quick money fix. Um, a lot of people I feel like get into it and they like the idea of it and then they start it. I've seen quite a few people already just drop out because they just can't handle it, which I understand understandably. If I didn't have my fiance and he wasn't working, like I wouldn't have been able to switch careers or if I wasn't living with my parents at the time, I wouldn't have been 
there's no way, not in this economy. So all things considered, yes, the job is unstable, but it pays great. I think it's gonna be worth it in the long, in the long run. I think that's all the questions I got for today. If you guys have any more, please put them in the comments below because I would love to do another video like this and check the description. Like I said before, I have some product codes down there if you guys want some money off of things. Um, I will also link in a card somewhere uh, my previous video or my first video. It kind of went over the same thing. I might miss, I might have missed some things in this video that was said in that other video. So I will link that one, but thanks for coming by and I will see you guys another time.